Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We've been talking about welfare economics. So far, we've been looking at the gains from trade to a buyer. Now we're going to turn our attention to our second group, the sellers. In this series of presentations, we'll work out how to derive the seller's gains from trade, or what we call producer surplus. Let's start off with our seller. Her name's going to be Angie, and she's going to have four apples to start with. We want to ask, what is Angie's marginal opportunity cost of giving up one apple? Now, that's going to depend which apple it is. So we're going to ask, what is Angie's marginal cost of giving up one apple, when she still has three apples? What's her marginal cost of giving up a second apple, when she's already given up a first apple? What's her marginal opportunity cost of giving up a third apple, when she's already given up two apples? And finally, what's her marginal opportunity of cost of giving up the last apple, when she's already given away her other three apples? So, let's ask Angie. Let's imagine we ask her, we say, Hey, Angie, you've got four apples. What is the minimum amount we would have to give you to compensate you for giving up a first apple? You'll still have three apples left, but we want you to give up one apple. What is the minimum amount that you would be willing to accept? Let's say that Angie says, Well, I'd be willing to accept certainly no less than 50 cents for that first apple. So Angie's marginal opportunity cost of giving up the first apple is given by 50 cents. So let's now imagine that Angie's given up that first apple. She's now got three apples left and we ask her a new question. We say, hey Angie, what is the minimum amount you'd be willing to accept to give up just one more apple given that you've now only got three apples left? So given you've already given up one apple, you're down to three apples, what is the minimum amount we'd have to pay you to convince you to give up one more apple? And let's imagine that Angie's answer to that is now, say, 80 cents. So that's Angie's marginal opportunity cost of giving up that second apple, given she's already given up one apple. Now, let's just hang on there for a second. Notice that we've said that Angie's marginal opportunity cost of giving up the first apple, when she has four apples, is only 50 cents. But the marginal cost of her giving up a second apple, when she's already given up the first apple, is higher. It's 80 cents. Is that sensible? Well, yes. If you've got four apples, you would expect the marginal opportunity cost you of giving up a first apple would be lower than the opportunity cost of giving up an apple when you've only got three apples. In other words, the more apples you have, the lower you would expect your marginal opportunity cost to be of giving up a last apple. So we would expect Angie's marginal opportunity cost to be going up as she gets fewer and fewer apples. OK, so suppose that Angie's given up two apples She's down to two apples, and we ask the question again. Hey Angie, you've got two apples left. What's the minimum amount we would have to compensate you to just get you to give up a third apple? Given you've already given up two, what's the minimum amount you'd be willing to accept to give up a third apple? And let's suppose her answer is $1.10. In other words, $1.10 is her marginal opportunity cost of giving up a third apple when she's already given up two apples. Again, notice that Angie's marginal opportunity cost is going up when she has fewer apples. So the marginal opportunity cost to Angie of giving up a third apple, when she's already given up two, is higher than the marginal opportunity cost to her of giving up a second apple when she's only given up one, which was only 80 cents. And finally, Angie's down to her last apple She's already given up three apples. We're now going to ask her a question. Angie, given that you've already given up three apples, what is the minimum amount of compensation you would need to just be willing to give up the last apple, that fourth apple? And let's imagine her answer is a dollar eighty. She'd need at least a dollar eighty compensation to be willing to give up 
that last, that fourth apple. So $1.80 is her marginal opportunity cost of her last apple, and as expected, that's higher than all of her previous marginal opportunity costs. The marginal opportunity cost of giving up your last apple is going to be more than giving up your second last apple, which is more than giving up your third last apple, and so on. So now we have a table that gives Anji's marginal opportunity cost of giving up one apple. And we've now done that for each of her four apples. So we have the marginal opportunity cost of her first apple, 50 cents. Second apple, given she's given up the first apple, the marginal opportunity cost of giving up a second apple is 80 cents. Giving up a third apple is $1.10. And giving up her last apple is $1.80. We're now able to plot those and get Anji's marginal opportunity cost curve. So here are our axes. We've got quantity on the horizontal axis, price on the vertical axis, and let's start plotting her marginal opportunity cost. So we're starting off with Anji having four apples, and we're asking what is the marginal opportunity cost of giving up one of those apples. And that's 50 cents. So for the first apple, this point here is on Anji's marginal opportunity cost curve. It shows that when she gives up one apple, the marginal opportunity cost of giving up that first apple is 50 cents. Similarly, given that Angie's given up her first apple, the marginal opportunity cost to her of giving up a second apple, when she now has three apples, well that's 80 cents. So for her second apple, this is her marginal opportunity cost point. For second apple, it's 80 cents is her marginal opportunity cost. For her third apple, her marginal opportunity cost is $1.10, so that's this point here on her marginal opportunity cost curve. And for her last apple, given that she's already sold or given up three apples, Angie's marginal opportunity cost of that last apple is $1.80, so this is a fourth point on her marginal opportunity cost curve. And here's the full curve. 50 cents is the marginal opportunity cost of her first apple, 80 cents for the second, a dollar ten for the third, and one dollar eighty for the last. We have Angie's marginal opportunity cost curve for apples, and we can go from marginal opportunity cost to total opportunity cost. So let's imagine we ask a different question. Angie starts off with four apples, and let's imagine we take two of those apples away, and we ask the question, Angie, how much would we have to compensate you in total? So you are just no better off, no worse off, once we've taken those two apples away from you. Well, that's simple. It's going to be the marginal opportunity cost of her first apple, plus the marginal opportunity cost of her second apple, which is $1.30. And we can represent that by the area under Angie's marginal opportunity cost curve. To see that, notice that this purple area that we've drawn here is simply 50 cents high, one apple wide, so the area there is exactly 50 cents, or her marginal opportunity cost of giving up that first apple. And the green shaded area here, well, that's just 80 cents high, and again, one apple wide between her second and first apple, so that's her marginal opportunity cost, 80 cents, of giving up the second apple. And we know that her total opportunity cost of giving up her first two apples is simply the marginal opportunity cost of giving up the first apple plus the marginal opportunity cost of giving up the second apple when she's already given up the first apple and that is simply equal to the total area under her marginal opportunity cost curve up to the two apples that she gives up and that's equal to 50 cents plus 80 cents or as we've noted $1.30. So, Angie's total opportunity cost of foregoing two apples is simply given by the total area under Angie's marginal cost curve up to two apples. And that's, in this example, 50 cents plus 80 cents, $1.30. Or the blue shaded area down here. And mathematically, we can write that as the integral under Angie's marginal cost curve between zero apples and two apples. So the integral under her marginal cost curve with regards to Q 
between 0 and 2 apples. That's this blue shaded area here, that's just the mathematical way of writing it. And we can do this for any number of apples, so let's imagine that we ask Anji a slightly different question. Anji, what's the total cost to you of foregoing all four apples? So you're going to sell all four apples, what's the minimum amount of money you need to end up with in your hand so that you're better off selling the four apples than keeping the four apples? And that's going to be just the sum of her marginal opportunity costs, the 50 cents for the first apple that she gives up, the 80 cents for the second apple, given she's already given up the first apple, the dollar 10 for the third apple, given she's already given up the first two apples, and the dollar 80 for the last apple, when she's already given up three apples, add that up, that's $4.20. And that's just the same as this blue shaded area here. So the area under Angie's marginal cost curve up to four apples is her total cost of foregoing four apples. Mathematically, that's the same as the integral under her marginal cost curve between 0 and 4 apples. So this blue area that we've got here is just written mathematically by this integration up here. To summarise, the area under a person's marginal cost curve up to a particular quantity gives a measure of that person's total opportunity cost from giving up that quantity of the good. So for example the area under Angie's marginal cost curve up to two apples gave her total opportunity cost from giving up two apples. Let's now ask a slightly different question. How much would Angie gain if she sells two apples at a dollar per apple? Or another way of saying that is, what would Angie's gains from trade be if she sells two apples at a dollar per apple? Or what would Angie's producer surplus be if she sells two apples at a dollar an apple? Note that producer surplus is just another term for the seller's gains from trade. Note that if Angie sells two apples at a dollar per apple, then her revenue, or the amount of money she gets, is two dollars. But remember that Angie's total opportunity cost of giving up two apples was $1.30, or in other words $1.30 is just the minimum amount she'd need to receive as compensation. That amount would just make her indifferent between selling the two apples and not selling the two apples. So Angie's producer surplus, or gains from trade, is the difference between the minimum amount she'd be willing to accept and the amount she actually gets. So in this example, she'd be willing to accept $1.30. She actually gets $2. So that difference, 70 cents, is Angie's producer surplus or her gains from trade from selling two apples at a dollar per apple. We can represent that in a diagram. Here again, we've got quantity of apples on the horizontal axis, dollars on the vertical axis, and we've drawn in Angie's marginal cost curve, that's this orange curve here. Remember that we're looking at Angie's gains from trade when she sells two apples at a dollar per apple. Well notice that her revenue is simply represented by this pink rectangle here. That rectangle is exactly one dollar high times two apples wide. So the area of that pink rectangle is Angie's revenue which is two dollars. Then to get Angie's total opportunity cost of giving up for two apples, well that's given by the area under her marginal cost curve up to two apples. That's given by the blue shaded area here and we know that's exactly equal to $1.30. So if we take her total opportunity cost area away from her revenue area, we're left with this area here. And that red shaded area represents Angie's producer surplus or her gains from trade from selling for two apples and it's exactly equal to 70 cents. Notice that what we've done here to get Angie's producer surplus is we've looked at the area under the price that she receives for apples above her marginal cost curve so the area under the price above marginal cost 
up to the quantity of apples that Anji sells gives a measure of her gains from trade from selling that many apples or a measure of her producer surplus. So in summary, we've worked out Anji's producer surplus, 70 cents, when she sells two apples at a dollar per apple. We've done that numerically, noting that she earns two dollars and she has a total opportunity cost of a dollar thirty. So the 70 cents is just the two dollars revenue minus the dollar thirty she needed just to compensate her for the apples. And we've also shown how to do that on a diagram. Next time we're going to show the relationship between the marginal cost curve and the supply curve. Talk to you next time.